1927, scientists ran an experiment that shattered everything we thought we knew about reality. A single particle of light did something impossible. It changed depending on whether someone was watching. That discovery revealed something extraordinary. You're not just observing reality, you're creating it. The act of observation changed physical reality, not because of the equipment, not because of interference, but because consciousness itself was interacting with matter. And here's what that means for you. You're not just living in reality, you are its creator. This is called the observer effect, and it's not a theory. It's been replicated thousands of times in laboratories around the world. Werner Heisenberg, one of the founders of quantum mechanics, said what we observe is not nature itself, but nature exposed to our method of questioning. At the quantum level, particles exist in what's called superposition. They're not in one place or another. They exist in all possible states simultaneously, as pure potential. Think of Schrodinger's famous cat, both alive and dead until someone opens the box. That's not just a thought experiment. That's how quantum particles actually behave. An electron doesn't have a location until you measure it. Before observation, it exists as a probability wave, a field of potential spread across space. But the instant you observe it, that wave of possibility collapses into a single, definite reality. This disturbed Einstein so much that he spent decades trying to disprove it. He famously said, God does not play dice with the universe. But Niels Bohr responded, Einstein stopped telling God what to do. And every experiment since has proven Bohr right. Consciousness doesn't just observe reality. It participates in creating it. Pause for a moment. Take a breath. Say this out loud. I am not separate from what I observe. I am the observer creating my reality. Feel that shift. That's not motivation. That's quantum mechanics. In 1978, physicist John Wheeler proposed something that sounds impossible. Imagine you're watching a basketball game on replay. The ball is in midair, heading toward the hoop. But here's the twist. You can decide right now whether the ball goes in or misses. And your choice changes what actually happened in the past. That's not science fiction. That's the delayed choice experiment. Wheeler showed that you could decide how to measure a photon after it had already traveled, and your choice now would determine what path it took in the past. The future was reaching back and creating the past. Your observation now doesn't just affect what happens next. It affects what already happened. Then there's quantum entanglement. When two particles become entangled, they remain connected regardless of distance. Change the state of one, and the other changes instantly, even if it's on the other side of the universe. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance because it violated everything classical physics said was possible. But in 1964, physicist John Bell proved it was real. And in 2022, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for experiments confirming it beyond any doubt. Here's what this means practically. You've walked into a room and immediately felt the energy. You've thought about someone and they texted you moments later. You've set an intention and watched circumstances align. You weren't imagining it. You were experiencing quantum entanglement at a macro scale. Your consciousness was interacting with the field of possibility around you. Now here's where it gets fascinating. Because while quantum physicists were discovering this in laboratories in the 20th century, Ancient spiritual traditions had been teaching it for thousands of years. The Upanishads, written 3,000 years ago, state the universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything that you want, you already are. Buddhism teaches that reality is empty of inherent existence, that phenomena only arise through the interaction of consciousness and conditions. Sound familiar? The Tao Te Ching says, the Tao that can be observed is not the eternal Tao. The act of observation changes what's being observed. These weren't metaphors. They were describing the same phenomenon. Quantum physics would later prove with mathematics. And here's the practical part. You've experienced this. You've walked into a room and felt the energy shift. You've thought about someone 
and they called. You've set an intention and watched reality reorganize around it. You weren't imagining it, you were observing. And observation, as we now know, is creation. And here's where it gets wild. Because scientists are now proving what these ancient texts described. Not through philosophy, through repeatable experiments with measurable results. In the 1970s, Princeton University established the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab. For nearly three decades, they ran experiments testing whether human consciousness could influence random number generators. The results? Statistically significant deviation from randomness when people focused their intention on the machines. Small effect, but consistent across millions of trials. Dr. Dean Radin at the Institute of Noetic Sciences has replicated the double-slit experiment with a twist. He placed human observers at varying distances from the experiment. The result? The interference pattern changed based on the observer's focus and intention, not just their presence. Then there's the Global Consciousness Project. Since 1998, they've had random number generators running continuously around the world. During major global events, 9-11, the 2004 tsunami, the death of Princess Diana, the randomness decreased. Billions of people focusing on the same event created measurable coherence in what should be pure randomness. The HeartMath Institute has shown that heart rate variability changes when people focus on positive emotions. But here's the remarkable part. Those changes can be detected in the electromagnetic field up to several feet away from the body. Your emotional state isn't just internal, it's radiating outward, interacting with the quantum field around you. Dr. Masaru Emoto's water crystal experiments showed that water exposed to positive words and intentions formed more symmetrical, beautiful crystals than water exposed to negative words. Controversial, yes, but it points to something deeper, that consciousness interacts with matter at levels we're only beginning to understand. If this is resonating with you, say it with me. I am the conscious observer. My awareness shapes my reality. So how do you actually use this? How do you move from understanding to application? Start with your morning. Before you check your phone, before you start thinking about your to-do list, take 60 seconds, close your eyes, take three deep breaths, and say, I am the observer. Today, I choose to notice possibility instead of limitation. Throughout your day, catch yourself when you say I have to, and replace it with I choose to. That small shift moves you from passive observer to active creator. When you feel a strong emotion, pause, name it. I observe that I'm feeling anxious, not I am anxious. You're not the emotion, you're the observer of the emotion. That distinction is quantum mechanics in action. You're collapsing the wave function of your emotional state by observing it without identifying with it. Before important moments, a meeting, a conversation, creating content, take 10 seconds, set an intention. I intend for this to unfold with clarity and ease. You're not wishing, you're not hoping, you're observing a specific possibility in the quantum field and collapsing it into your reality. At night, Review your day, not to judge it, but to observe it. Where did I show up as the conscious observer? Where did I forget? That reflection strengthens your observer muscle. And the stronger your observer, the more deliberately you create. Here's what changes when you truly embody this. You stop being a victim of circumstances because you understand that circumstances are collapsed possibilities and you're the one doing the collapsing. You stop waiting for permission because you realize there's no external authority greater than your own consciousness. You stop fearing the future because you understand that the future is probability waves and your observation in this moment is creating what comes next. This isn't positive thinking. This isn't manifestation in the way it's usually taught. This is quantum mechanics applied to your daily life. The ancient mystics knew it. The quantum physicists proved it, and now you get to live it. You are not a passive witness to your life. 
You are the conscious observer collapsing infinite possibilities into the reality you experience. Every moment is a choice point. Every observation is an act of creation. The question isn't whether you're creating your reality. You already are. The question is, are you doing it consciously or unconsciously? And if this shifted something in you, hit that like button. It tells the algorithm to share this understanding with more people who are ready for it. Drop a comment and tell me, what's one area of your life where you're ready to shift from passive observer to conscious creator? Because here's the truth that quantum physics reveals. You've always been the observer. You've always been creating. The only thing that's changing is your awareness of it. And awareness, as we now know, is everything. You are the observer. Welcome to your quantum shift.